GO.com. Team Quantum with you today. The most comprehensive, non evasive blood glucose and metabolic health monitor in the market today. And these folks are absolutely phenomenal. And they've got it for you here. Let's talk a little bit about this. Gluco Quantum is an award winning, innovative, portable, personal, affordable, non invasive, wireless, self measuring blood close monitor technology is winning awards across the board and they want you to go over and help them fund this project at i.com search gluco quantum your partner in diabetes management and tell them you heard about it here transmedia worldwide go over and help them out today give them some of your hard-earned money today that's always the line. Give them some of your hard-earned money. We are going to go to the telephones. We have got a great guest with us today. John O'Connor is back with us here on our broadcast. And he has Postgate, which is a uh, fantastic, fantastic book. How the Washington Post betrayed Deep Throat, covered up Watergate, and began today's partisan advocacy journalism. And you can buy the book on Amazon. And John O'Connor joins us today here on the telephone. And uh, coronavirus is all over the news. Pretty much that's the only thing people are talking about. Um, John... I'm starting to see a lot of stories that uh, it looks like that Americans may be losing their rights with all this. Uh, threats of martial law, all sorts of things. There was a, a rumor fairly recently that these, um, all this money they were going to send to the United States citizens, um, they were going to put it as a digital currency so they could track it. Uh, what do you make of all this, my friend? Well, here's where I think we are. I think we're in an emergency. So I think what the government is doing now is acceptable uh, for a lot of reasons. We've got to get data uh, so we can figure out how to get back to work safely. Uh, we, we, we're beating the clock here with making a lot of medicines, making a lot of masks, making a lot of ventilators. Uh, businesses are cooperating. They're, we don't even need the Defense Production Act to to get them to start going. So all that is good. Yeah. My point here is that if it goes on too long, that there are overly restrictive rules being implied that don't let people ply their trade, do their businesses, get to work. Now what we have is literally we have a taking under the Fifth Amendment. Now, I don't think we're there yet. Uh, we're not at partial law. I don't – probably that's not going to be necessary. I mean, there's a the, – the, both the federal government and the state governments have adequate what they call police powers under the Constitution. It doesn't mean policemen, but police meaning health and safety. Yeah. But where, where I go with this, James, is that I, I think that um, time is everything. If this lasts too long, then the government has taken a lot of property from a lot of people in the trillions. And the problem is, what are our rights? Our rights are under the Fifth Amendment to go get, have the government pay us back. But <laughs> but we but if you take from enough people, I mean, those same people are going to have to pay taxes to pay themselves back. So there's no easy answer. It's not like there's a magic pie in the sky that's going to rain dollars on us without having to pay it back. I mean, we pay each other back. So my only hope here is, and I think it's good that President Trump gives us hope, is that come Easter – we peek our heads out of the hole, uh, you know, and and uh, like Punxsutawney Phil, we decide whether to go on. I think we can probably go back. The data, some of the data looks pretty good. And I think we can probably go back to work in sensible ways and uh, start edging back into it. Some of us, like me, I practice law. I can do it from my living room still, and I'm over 70. Uh, we got to be sensible about it, but at the same time, we all have a right to to live, and so I, I I don't think we're there yet. I fear, but I don't think we're there, and uh, hopefully we'll beat this sucker. And, and the, think about this though. Think about you what would happen if we had a nationalized health industry, and we weren't you know paying any drug manufacturers profits as Bernie Sanders would want. I mean, I think we'd be in real trouble. But right now, there are a lot of people with incentive. There are a lot of people making drugs. Uh, manufacturing things, researching, 
Now, one other thing I would say to this that bothers me is, while the president is trying to give us hope, if you look at last Sunday's New York Times, the entire review section is filled with anti-Trump stuff right at a time when the nation should be uh, unified, like Winston Churchill in Britain or Abraham Lincoln in the Civil War or so forth and so on. We need to be unified. We can carp about political matters later on, but we need to be unified in this, and it doesn't do any good for uh, the media to just try to th- – everything, whatever happens, either does too much, not enough, he's xenophobic, he's racist, he's this, he's that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, and I'd say cut, cut, cut it out. Cut it out, guys. Let's, let's work together. That's See, that's, that's, that's the thing that I don't understand is that, you know, granted, there, there are a lot of things that I, I like about Trump, and there's a lot of things that I just absolutely cannot stand. Like, uh, for instance, the other day he had the, he had the woman from, like, the CDC or whatever up there, and, and he starts asking her questions about how, well, you know, when this is all over with and we get rid of social distancing or all these you know, crazy New York Times reporter is going to be able to come back in here. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I, yeah. I, calm down. <laughs> but yeah, at I, the same time, I don't like, like you were saying, people getting online going, ah, this is Trump's fault, he's a piece of crap. And it's like, guys, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> I think everybody well, ought to just know, calm down, John. <laughs> Well, you, I had the same reaction you did. I thought that was the worst <laughs> minute of his performance. He just... couldn't help but say, you know, look, if all these crazy New York Times reporters want to sit together and all that stuff, he didn't need to say that. Why didn't he just say, you know, can they all sit together? Yeah. Uh, I just... you know, but he, he, couldn't, he couldn't resist. He and that's, just can't that's resist. Kind of tr- yeah, you know, that, that, that really got me. And I think, why do you do that? You know, if I'm one of his advisors, I'm just wincing. You know, I'm winching. Uh, well, you know, I, I remember when, when he was, when, when he originally was running, and CNN and everybody were all cheering, cheering Trump, and he was knocking all these guys out of the way, Ted Cruz and Huckle Chuckle and all these, he was knocking all these guys out of the way. And they were just cheering him on. And then he got the nomination, and then they turned on him, and they started supporting Hillary. And I'm like... And it's like he got personally offended by this. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> and he's held yeah. on to this forever. Every chance he gets. Yeah. Oh, evil CNN. Oh, this and that. And I'm like, dude, you got to calm down. It, do you, yeah. you, you watch TV. You watch enough of this stuff. Didn't you know this was going to happen? <laughs> right. Did you watch John McCain? Yeah. John McCain was loved by the New York Times, and the very minute he gets a nomination, all of a sudden they splash on the front page that he's having some affair that they don't oh, know yeah. he's having. And, you know, and <laughs> it's terrible. They just start slandering the poor guy, you know, and he thinks he's made friends and goodwill. No way. Yeah. Do that. I just, it, it, it's like, calm down. I know that, that they, uh, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like so, th- there's been some Republicans I've noticed that, they will buy in like like they'll be running for office and they'll they'll be doing really well and then the corporate republicans will come along and they'll be like okay we got to get these guys we got to get this guy out of the way or this chick out of the way or whatever and they replace they try to replace them with their own you know person and I just, it's same thing with Trump. It's like Trump comes in and he's like, well, that damn CNN. And it's like, guys, <laughs> did you not know yeah. this is what he would, what they were going to do to you? <laughs> yeah. So it's stuff like yeah. the other day where he's like, well, you know, uh, all these, you know, takes a shot at these people. I'm like, dude, just calm down. Well, he's got, you know, the thing about it is he's, he's actually a tough guy and he's got a good sense of humor. And if he would just calm down be kind of relaxed, and every now and then take one of his sarcastic kind of New York shots that people would be fine. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, he, I'll tell you. just, you know. John, I love it when he does these rallies, and it's basically a 
and and he's he's on you know hell he's in the WWE Hall of Fame he he's a W you know he's a big wrestling fan him and he he had those two WrestleManias with Vince back in the day he knows how this works but essentially he gets up there on these rallies and just cuts promos on people and I'm like do that do that stuff don't don't get up in front of everybody and go okay well you know and like the other day with the stupid little comment it's like. Also, something else, and you've been lo- you've been around long enough, John, and you've known enough of these players to know this. The thing I don't understand is that he won. <laughs> he acts yeah. like he didn't win. <laughs> it's like right. you're the president. Right. <laughs> no, no, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take a victory lap with your arms raised and. Uh, you don't worry about it, you know. Yeah, and, uh, you act it's like, like you act like it's the biggest victory in in, in history, uh, and you don't act like you've been damaged. But yeah. No, and, no, that's his problem. He's got that thin skin, you know. He and he, he he remembers names. Oh yes, yes, very much so. <laughs> yeah, you know, James. I think he's got what they call Irish Alzheimer's. You know what that is? No. <laughs> you forget everything but the grudges. <laughs> Well, there is that. <laughs> John yeah, O'Connor so that's, that's with us today. Got. He has got a fantastic book, Postgate, How the Washington Post Betrayed Deep Throat, Covered Up Watergate, and Began Today's Partisan Advocacy Journalism. It is a great read. It is a solid read. It's available on Amazon right now. And John's with us today talking about this uh, COVID-19 and all the different things with it. Um, you being a constitutional lawyer, um, do you see that there is a potential, much like with 9-11, where certain entities in the government feel like they can take advantage? Do you think that there are certain entities in this government that see this as a possible way to take advantage? Well, sure. Sure. Anytime you have these crises, you've got an awful lot of buildings in Washington, D.C., full of people that are paid a lot of money by different people to make sure that money gets out of the, the uh piggy trough to them and so what you're going to see is the same way we pass obamacare and lo and behold all kinds of people are getting special treatment from uh uh from the health officials the bank uh the dodd frank thing which cured a problem that didn't exist uh there was a problem there but it didn't have to do with capitalization of the banks but then there are a lot of people who pro- who profited from that guess what all the people who supported barney frank and chris dodd were all of a sudden deemed too big to fail. So you see in these crises, people learn, the savvy Washington players know how to go in and grab things when nobody's looking, nobody notices, and there's going to be a lot of that going on, and uh, you just hope that it's only a small part of the stu- of the money in your pocket that these guys are taking and not anything more. But, yeah, it's it's a real opportunity for people to do things. I don't know if you saw that, you know, they're trying to put in Green New Deal stuff into the legislation. I mean, that's all we really need to do is worry about carbon dioxide uh, molecules in the air when, you know, we're all going to hell in a handbasket, you know? (laughs) It is John O'Connor. He's with us today here in our broadcast. And, John, before we let you go, uh, how do people find you online, get the book, everything else? Well, the best way to do it is go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble, one of the Internet booksellers, 